Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today is the day where we can finally talk about Z690, Intel 12th Gen, DDR5, PCI Express Gen 5, kind of. And we're gonna kick it off with this, the Z690 Carbon Wi-Fi from MSI. Let's do this. Andy, what are you watching? It's, uh, it's, it's not what you think. Wow, it's so big! Why, well, thank you. It's the new AOC AG493 UCX. 49 inches of pure performance and a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It's so fast. You can even do two at a time. What? You can connect two devices at a time and split the screen. With FreeSync Premium Pro, a 32 to 9 aspect ratio and a built-in KVM, you'll be finished in no time. Gaming, I mean. What, what did you think I mean? Get your mind out the gutter and click the link in the description to find out more. So that intro really only makes sense if you have not watched any of our other video content because we have a bucket load. And if you're into MSI, then we have things like this, which is the Z690 Unify board. Then we have got a preview on that. And we have got previews on ASUS boards and Gigabyte boards and so forth. And that's kind of what today is all about. It's all about showing you the boards, talking about kind of speculative things. Sadly, you're not gonna find any benchmarks here today. Sadly, you're not gonna see any performance figures in any shape or form. It's more about kind of the hardware, what it's actually gonna mean, how it's gonna facilitate, um, sort of what we are gonna see in the benchmarks on the 4th of November. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure you are for that because on the 4th of November, we are gonna be dropping a bucket load of content on motherboards, on processors, on memory, on comparisons, on absolutely kind of everything. So let's talk about the carbon Wi-Fi. Let's talk about who it's for, what it's all about, what we can actually sort of see from an aesthetic standpoint, as well as just what the main kind of key features are. So the carbon Wi-Fi has been around for quite a few generations now. We've seen it on Z590, Z490. We've seen it on the AMD side of things. The name has changed ever so slightly over the years. We used to have gaming pro carbon Wi-Fi and things like that, but this is the Z690 carbon Wi-Fi. As the name denotes, it's got Wi-Fi. So that is one of the key features. And if we actually look at it, it is going to be Wi-Fi 6E. So Z690 does bring Wi-Fi 6E. There are some boards out there on the market that only have Wi-Fi 6. So definitely check into that. Either way, lightning fast speeds there. On the box, I mean, we can see Windows 11 compatible, which is a big thing for Intel 12th gen. From what we can see, the way that the whole kind of, you know, big little architecture of Alder Lake is going to be and how that's going to work with Windows 11 and actually assigning cores to appropriate areas, depending on the workload and the task that you're actually doing. Windows 11 is gonna be a big, big thing. Uh, TPM 2.0, we all know about that. I don't even really wanna delve into it, but we have support for Intel 12th gen. We are looking at Intel Z690. Looking around the back of the box, I always like this on MSI boards, you get a really, really kind of clear view of exactly what the board is gonna look like and some of the key standout features. I mean, when it comes to power design, this is just, ridiculous and we've seen this on so many different z690 boards but we are looking at an 18 plus one plus one phase power design with 75 amp smart power stages some of these have actually got 105 amp power stages it's just ridiculous the amount of power that these can basically be put into the cpu and into the cpu socket we do have ddr5 support we've got lightning uh, gen 5 speeds not that there's any devices that can really kind of harness that at the moment but chicken and the egg basically the technology is there the hardware for it will come kind of at a later date. We have got USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 and so much more. So let's kind of open it up, have a look at what we actually get accessory wise and go from there. Now, whenever we get a board from MSI, they always give us this kind of handy dandy, not even a cheat sheet, but it tells us, you know, where to get the latest BIOS from, the fact that they've tested it and what they've tested it with, what kind of scores they get, so that when we're actually testing as reviewers, it's really handy that we can sort of say, well, we're getting this, you're getting that, everything lines up. Problem is, obviously, we all use different hardware, so it's kind of irrelevant, but you know, it's nice to see. Uh, in here, I'm guessing we're gonna have our Wi-Fi module if looking at any of these boards, uh, you know, in the past or anything to go by. And yeah, these are the Wi-Fi um, antenna for the Wi-Fi 6E. So you have got them straight away in the top of the box. Underneath that is the motherboard, and I'm gonna put that kind of to one side just for a second, because I do wanna go through the rest of the accessories first. So we do get a nice little case badge sticker. We get some stickers. I don't know what it is, but motherboard manufacturers these days, they keep putting these little stickers with them to kind of put onto your, your battery and to put onto other areas of your board, your case, wherever you want to put them. 
I don't really see the point. I kind of feel like we've got past the whole like case badge stickers and stuff like that. But you know, some people are still into it. We do get a little brochure telling us that MSI make many, many other products and you've seen a lot of them on the channel. So there is that. We get a quick installation guide, which is always nice if this is maybe your first time building a PC. Uh, a little bit of um, how you can enter and win. I think it's like Steam credit or some games or something. Uh, thank you basically for buying the product, you know, fill this in and you can win some stuff. Uh, we have the MSI reward program. So you can get rewards for buying, uh, again, MSI products. We get the whole thank you for choosing MSI. I mean, there's many, many different ways you can say thank you for choosing an MSI product. And yeah, they've really gone to town on it. We do have some more stickers. These ones I actually do like because they are kind of labels for your SATA cables and things like that. And, you know, fan cables and RGB. It just allows you to keep a little bit more organized when you're actually building your PC again uh, and going from there. We do get a user guide. So uh, again, if you're building this for the first time, even if you're not doing things like the front panel headers, of which we do have a video on, of course. Uh, but, you know, if you ever get stuck, this can be really handy as kind of a reference guide. We have a little standoff for our M.2. It's actually called an M.2 locker. So in the past, you would have a standoff and it would have a little screw that goes in. This and MSI aren't the only brand to do it. There are other brands that do it, but basically screws in and then it's just kind of a little latch that you can pull, pull around. So if like us, when you're doing kind of on the fly testing on a test bench and things like that, that's actually really handy that we can just kind of lock the M.2 in do what we've got to do, unlock it without having to get a screwdriver, taking it all apart and so forth. So you get one of them, you get two of them. Uh, is there any more? Okay, so you get two of them in total. You do get the um, MSI Keep Bundle in these with their motherboards, and I actually really like the idea behind it. It's a little Phillips screwdriver and a little flathead. Obviously, I'm going to say go over to store.etechnics.com and buy the eTechnics PC Maintenance Toolkit, which is still amazing. But it's nice to get these so that you can basically unscrew the, I'm guessing, based on the picture and everything, the large kind of heatsink area to get to them M.2 devices. We also get a USB flash drive, which is gonna have all of the latest BIOS details and, uh, sorry, driver details and uh, all, all of the, the stuff for there. I say latest at the time of production. Obviously, as we build up to a launch and the official release date, there are gonna be new drivers and things like that. You'd like to think Windows 10 or Windows 11, you are gonna be getting the latest drivers automatically, but yeah. They're there. And I mean, if you don't want to use it for the drivers and that, you get a free USB, so happy days. You also get one of these, which is basically a little uh, brush for cleaning out your keyboard and sort of getting rid of dust and stuff. It kind of pushes out and yeah, you get one of them. Uh, we also get a Y splitter cable for your RGB. So it's got a female four pin RGB that comes out into two male uh, RGB connectors as well. We then get two SATA cables, one of them being right angled. And then we get uh, I believe this, and I actually said this in the Unify uh, video, which again, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I believe it's like a proprietary RGB connector that they use on the MSI boards. So there is that. And then we have uh, that same proprietary connector, but um, obviously we get male and female, which comes out into a conventional three pin addressable RGB. So that's basically it for the accessory side of things. Let's put it all back and then we can actually start talking about the motherboard itself. So put all this to one side, put it on the floor and have a little look at the motherboard itself. So taking it out of its anti-stack bag, we kind of get that first glimpse and the first thing I am going to do is peel off all the protective film so that we don't have any glare and you can kind of really appreciate what it's all about. And they do actually put a lot of this on there because there's quite a few areas on motherboards now that are quite kind of shiny and reflective and stuff like that. So I'll try and take off all of this stuff so you guys can really appreciate kind of how it looks. And I'm probably not doing this any justice whatsoever, kind of ripping this off. And I'm sure some people are going to complain in the uh, in the comments section that, you know, I should be doing this really nicely and ASMR with the peeling and things like that. But, you know, I haven't got time for that. We just want to get it done. So, and it does seem like I can't actually get all of it off because it's kind of stuck and I've ripped it off in such a way now that I'm not actually going to be able to get it off. There you go, I'll give you a little bit. Right, so this is the motherboard itself. It still does have a little bit on there, which I'm going to try and take off. But this is the motherboard. So, I mean, it looks very much kind of what you'd expect from a carbon motherboard. They haven't really changed the design too much aesthetically. Maybe there's a few little kind of, you know, improvements here and there, but generally MSI with their carbon boards, they try and keep it quite 
sort of stealthy looking. They don't add excess color or anything like that that kind of dictates to you what color scheme you have to go with, with for your build. Instead, they kind of let all the RGB do the talking. And RGB on this, you're gonna have some up here and you're gonna have some down here as well. CPU socket wise, for anyone who hasn't seen one yet, like I mentioned, if you haven't seen any of our other videos, this is the LGA 1700 socket. So 1700 pins, except Intel 12th gen processors. And uh, yeah, we've got, we're actually gonna be testing this for the 4th of November with a uh, i9-12900K. And you probably noticed with the CPU socket, it actually opens very similar to X299 and not so much like the previous generation 1150X. Uh, obviously we have all of our phases around here, which I spoke about. You can see all the capacitors, you can see all the chokes. Uh, we do have, I guess a modest size kind of heat sink. It's actually quite tall, I guess, uh, this one at the top and then as it stems around here and it is connected underneath via a heat pipe. There's no kind of armor or shielding or anything on the back. Um, pretty sort of plain there, but that's kind of what you'd expect from a board of this caliber. If you want something, you know, with that, then you have boards like the Unify that I spoke about and I'm sure there is gonna be a godlike coming, which is just gonna be balls to the wall. So other than that, obviously the heat sink kind of stems into the rear IO, which we will sort of talk about the IO in a little bit. At the top for the power delivery, we've got two eight pin connectors. There's no shielding or anything on there, but at the kind of price point, this is more than likely gonna be aimed at. You're probably not gonna see, yeah, you wouldn't expect to see that anyway. Same with the memory. Now, when it comes to the memory, you gotta remember with Z690, there are some DDR4 boards, but most of them out there, and very much like this one, support DDR5. And we are gonna be testing that with some pretty crazy kits as well from kind of a variety of different brands and stuff. So again, stay tuned for that. At the top, we've got a few fan headers. We've got an addressable RGB header, debug LED, more fan headers than that proprietary RGB cable, 24 pin, our USB uh, three front panel header, type C. Uh, when it comes to SATA, we do have six ports. I've got to admit, a little bit disappointed that it only actually comes with two SATA cables when you have six ports on there, but is what it is at the end of the day. Uh, we've got front panel headers down here. We've got our um, more fan headers down here as well. USB front panels, another fan, uh, addressable RGB. We've got a little LED switch. So I believe you can actually turn this on and off on the fly. Uh, we've got a conventional four pin RGB header, front panel audio, and you can see all the audio capacitors and everything over here with the EMI shielding. In terms of expansion slots, PCI Express, we've got two X16 slots. And if I remember rightly on this one, it's actually got PCI Express 5.0 on both of the slots, which is pretty nice to see. And it does seem like if the rumor mill is anything to go by right now, Intel with their new Arc uh, GPUs, when they do launch sometime early next year, they're gonna be the ones potentially as the first GPU manufacturer with PCI Express Gen 5. So that's gonna be really, really interesting to see. We have also got another X16 slot down here, but the pins are only X4. This one's actually X8, this is full X16. Uh, other than that, we have our M.2 slot. So there is one here. I'm guessing just looking at it, there's gonna be one here, one here, and potentially also one here as well. And just by looking at the box and like I say, this is more about the aesthetics, what we see and kind of what I can see and explain that to you guys, but it does look like they are uh, PCI Express Gen 4 instead of Gen 5. Some of the boards out there do have Gen 5, not that there's any drives for that yet. And I mean, Gen 4, there's, there's drives out there now, like the Seagate Firecuda 530, which is doing 7,000 megabytes a second. How much faster do we honestly need to go? So there's that. Other than that, let's move around to the IO where I always like the carbon because you always get quite a lot of connectivity options. I mean, just looking at the amount of M.2s, the fact that we have you know, multiple X16 slots, which you know are Gen 5 and stuff as well, but we have a flash BIOS button. We've got plenty of USBs here, HDMI and DisplayPort, just in case you are using the iGPU. We obviously all know how it is at the moment in terms of actually getting hold of a GPU. Maybe you're gonna to upgrade to something like this and try and find a GPU at a later date. At least you're gonna have a fully working system because you're gonna be able to use that as long as you're not using one of the KF SKUs of Intel CPUs. Uh, we have got plenty of super speed, um, 10 gigabit per second USBs here. We've got a type C down here. We have actually got a USB that is specific for that flash BIOS. So you can put a USB in there, rename the file, press the button, don't need a CPU or anything, and you can update the BIOS. We've got 2.5G ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E, our uh, audio outputs, as well as an SP diff out. So quite a lot of features really for a board that I guess you could argue is kind of mid-range. Obviously, like I mentioned, if you want something higher end, there is gonna be the Unify that we have got a video on, so check that out. And I'm guessing, I mean, it would be silly to say that they wouldn't be having a godlike come out. Yes, it's gonna be expensive, but it's gonna have every feature known to man. And that's probably why we haven't got things like Gen 5 on here for the NVMe because, well, you know, 
maybe it's going to be reserved for something like that. So there you go, guys. That is the carbon in all its glory. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And remember, we've got tons of content on tons of other things. So definitely check that out. And remember, on the 4th of November, that's when we can finally lift the lid and sort of show you exactly how this performs in conjunction with an i9 12900K. And I mean, I haven't even started testing yet, but I can pretty much say straight away from all the rumors, from the stuff I've been told by Intel, it's going to be absolutely amazing. So definitely stay tuned for that and remember to subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.